When I was training for the Olympics, it was a four-year cycle. And throughout those four years, there's only one day that really mattered. And so there are lots of dark times where it's that day seems a long way away. And I think it's important in those times to actually put your head up and appreciate how lucky you are, enjoy it, rather than looking so far ahead all the time. I think that makes it much harder if you're just sort of constantly looking at the horizon rather than appreciating where you are on a daily basis. The primary thing is that I was in a team sport, not an individual sport. And so my dreams were in other people's hands and their dreams were in mine. So if I didn't get out of bed, I was letting down my teammates and that's a, a real motivating factor. And we trained by two things in that we didn't go through the training program with box ticking what we were doing. It was actually doing every session to the best of your ability. And that meant by the end point, by the Olympics, that we always get to the point where our worst was better than other people's best. And you can only do that if you put in the practice in those four years leading up to it to get yourself to a point where your average is good enough to win. When you're in the start of the Olympic final, everyone is as big and as strong as each other. So that's not going to be the defining difference. I think what we spoke a lot about was two things. The first was that we would treat second place as the worst place to come. You hear commentators say fourth the worst place to finish, whereas fourth means you doesn't come third. If your goal is to come first, it means second's a failure, third's a failure, fourth's a failure, second you get a nice shiny medal, but that's still a failure from what you wanted to achieve. And the other thing was that actually it was our medal and someone was trying to steal it from us rather than we were trying to win something. The Olympics was something I did and I really enjoyed, but I didn't want it to define me and therefore I thought I'd use the opportunity that you go and do some different things. It's very strange, stepping out of the world of sport, people think, well, all you can do is sport or talk about sport. And actually the parallels between sport there and business and life in general is that people are very quick to set limits on what you can achieve and, and put you in a box. And if you refuse to let other people set your limits, you set them yourself. You're, every chance of getting there and breaking through the ceilings, whether it be sport, relationship, business, anything.